Welcome mm. everybody. This week we are reading in Shul Behar Bechukotai. Anybody know anything about Behar and Bechukotai? Mm. Any, yeah, anything it brings about, up for Jeremiah. you? It's about Jeremiah. No, no, mm. I'm not talking about the Haftorah, Stuart. I'm talking about the Parashiyot. Mm. Yeah, Milton. Mita and the Yovel are in Mita Bahar. Mita and Yovel, right. So Bahar is, Bahar is the famous question from Rashi. Why mm. is, why are the laws of Shemitah put next to, why is that the specific mitzvah that is brought after we hear about that it was at Har Sinai, that that's specifically, Shemitah remembers the one we have to rest our land in Israel, not outside of Israel, for those who are farmers, every seven years. I'm not talking about the workaround that we have today. Some people follow it, some people don't. Somebody is giving feedback, but I can't tell who that is. When I figure it out, I'll ask you to mute. Um, the Behar Sinai, so, so there's a connection between specifically picking Shemitah when the land has to rest at Har Sinai. Any thoughts about that? Just while we're talking about the Parsha. Why would we pick Dafka Shemitah? Remember Shemitah, you know, the farmers are not allowed to um, work the land or gather in from the land. Everything has to be left Hefker. And Yovel, mm -hmm. the 50, every seven years, and the 50th year would mean two years in a row, 49 and 50. But maybe mm -hmm. because it's close to maybe it's close because it's close to Shavuot forty nine and fifty. Maybe that's the reason. Wait, why would Shemitah be specifically the because seminal it, it, mitzvah it, at Har Sinai? Mm -hmm. Stuart, is that what you answered? Seven weeks to seven mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. No, I know that, but why specifically pick of all the mitzvot? Why pick the mitzvah of Shemitah to talk about that that is indicative that it was given at Har Sinai, Moshe. Yeah, I think it's because the Jews were supposed to be going straight to Eretz Israel right after Har Sinai, so it was mm. a, a mitzvah oh. that was that was relevant for when they got there. Oh, because of the land. Oh, that's a nice idea. It's so interesting. I I don't think I ever heard that idea. That's really interesting. Thank you, Helen. Did you want you? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I have, um, and uh, is it that the laws of Shemitah are related to the laws of Shabbat? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think they are, because it's every seven years that you rest the land, every seven days we rest from creative so, work, okay. So then that just reinforces that the laws of Shabbat were given at Sinai? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I do see an example that Shemitah, if you think about it, it doesn't occur in nature. It's not like in nature that you have to rest the land every seven years. What is in nature is that you, when you have to plant, when you have to gather, when you sow, all, all of that stuff. But Shemitah is uh, overlaid by God as one of our commandments and showing our trust in God. And Shabbat is also does not occur in nature. We've spoken about that, that the month, the new month occurs in nature. Even the seasons and the year occurs in nature. Night and day occur in nature. What else occurs in nature? I'm not sure what else. But the, the, the division into seven days a week, that doesn't occur in nature. If you didn't know about Shabbat, there was no way for you to know which day is Shabbat in nature. So that could be a similarity as well. And it has to do with our belief in God as our God who gave us something that is uh, 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 um, what's the word on top of nature? But there's milamala. But there's another word like spiritually higher. Just one second, Ruby, Vivian. Did you want to say something? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, Vivian. Um, no, I, I, I wanted to say what what you've been talking about. The ah, beautiful. Oh, yeah. very nice. Thank you so much, yeah. Ruby. Yeah. Um, I may be wrong, but wouldn't the Ten Commandments all be uh, be a, a commandments of action? Whereas the Shemitah of don't don't uh, rest the land is one of that we don't always have action. There are times when we also have to be in a sense inactive. That's interesting. So let's think of the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord your God. So I guess that's a positive belief in God. Do not make that's refraining. Do not make graven images or idols. 
Um, do not um, bear false testimony, respect and honor your parents, keep the Shabbat, which includes refraining and not refraining. And then there's do not steal, do not murder, do not. So there's, there. I think there's a little bit of both, but that's, an, I, but let's put it separately from the 10 commandments, Ruby. It's just, in other words, I don't think we have to compare it to the 10 commandments that the 10 commandments mm -hmm. are all positive and that this is all refraining. But I think that's a beautiful idea. Just in general, I love that idea that it's indicative or representative of of what God gave us, that it's not just about doing, but it's also refraining mm -hmm. from doing because the doing would be more obvious. Mm -hmm. Oh, what do you have to do? You have to worship, you have to bring offerings, korbanot, mm -hmm. you have whatever it is. Right. Also that other that other um, religions have. Beautiful, all beautiful ideas, great. So we've started, Stuart, did you wanna to add to that? Well, I, I, was, I, was, I was thinking about that, the first fruits and things like that. When you talk about fruits and being on that, which is when you go into land, when you go into land, you're going to have fruits. Yeah, the of fruits like I said. So that's about that's about Shavuot. You mean to bring bikurim? Yeah, yeah. To get to to when you go to Israel, that's the first thing you're going to do. Right, but this wasn't about Bikurim. This is about Shemitah, which is refraining from working the land every seven mm -hmm. years. And they aren't even there yet. Right? So we had a few ideas here. One of them is that they were supposed to go into Israel, so give a law that has to do with Israel, which is beautiful. And then this idea that it's related to Shabbat, which is in the Ten Commandments. So that's very nice, Helen. It's a nice connection. And Ruby... Well, and you know why? Because... because, because uh, the show, the I know, but we weren't, I know, I hear you, Stuart. I'm just, we're talking about the question, why was Shemitah mentioned at Hard Sea Night in connection? That's the question that we discussed. So what you're saying is correct. It's just not relevant to what we were discussing. And then, um, so hold that thought. And then Ruby added another thought about, we, we might assume all our positive and, or all our action Okay, beautiful. These are amazing mm -hmm. thoughts, by the way, separate from everything else. I just think that they're amazing. Thank you. Continuing with Bechukotai. Who knows what Bechukotai is most well known for? The fring it's mm -hmm. most well known for, Helen. Lighting of the menorah. Bechukotai. Or I may be wrong. I think I'm wrong. Never mind. I think you're thinking, ah, you're thinking of Baha'alotcha. So similar, but not. Milton, you're muted again. Unmute. No, you're still muted, Milton. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, it's about the tochacha. The, tochacha, uh, right. The tochacha. Or all, tochacha the, all the right. curses that are going to be upon you if you don't listen. A right, lot the of pages right. full. A lot of pain, right. So there's two different areas in the Torah that have what are called the tochacha or the tochacha, which means to rebuke. I think that would be you should rebuke or chastise your neighbor, your friend. The, there's a big one in kitavo, kitavo al-aretz, when you come to Israel and you won't do what God wants you to do. And in B'chukotai is the smaller one, but that is what it's most well known for. Now, if you remember, um, we said that when we have two parashiyot together, the Haftorah is read for which one? Anybody remember that? Second one. The second one, except by the way, because there's always exceptions to the rule, except for the one that was read two weeks ago. Two weeks ago was Acharimot Kedoshim, and the Haftorah or the Haftarah for Acharimot is read whether we are laning Acharimot and Kedoshim together, or Acharimot and Kedoshim separate. Now, some, mm -hmm. like the Sansino, has it in the right place, but most of our Chumashim have it for Acharimot because that's what you read for Acharimot. So it's a little mm -hmm. hard to know which one. So, but in any case, it's a more important one. So two weeks ago, we broke that rule, which is fine because it was more important. But we're Kedoshim keeping that rule. Kedoshim is my Avdora. Which... Kedoshim is my Avdora. That's why. Oh, yeah, but it's not Kedoshim. It's the one for Acharimot, Stuart. Kedoshim is better. 
I thought she I liked it. That was my half hour. I, I like it. Well, but Stuart, did you read it on a year when they were separate or together? Separate. Right. So when they're separate, you read the Haftorah for for Kedoshim. But when they're yeah, together... Because, because, my, because I was, my, my birthday... Was no, that's... Stuart, I get it. No, I, I hear that. Yep. Beautiful. What I was trying to say was that when the two parashiot are together, Acharemot and Kedoshim, you don't read the Haftorah for Kedoshim. You actually read the Haftorah for Acharemot. So you were in an unusual year your bar mitzvah. I'm where, unusual. I'm unusual. <laughs> I'm <What>? unusual. <laughs> there you go. You're yeah. unusual. When, and you know something uh, else? What? Because, because <laughs> I had uh, uh, my birthday was in April, but in uh, Pesach, but the other people, uh, two, two other people uh, had the Zavid, Elaine, and, and they, their birthday was in May. So they worked, that's why. Got it. Okay. Like, Thank you. Like, yeah, my birthday, I, I got it. Uh, yeah, yeah Stuart, let's just keep with the subject of um, the Haftorah for the Har Bechukotai. I was just giving an example that we broke that rule two Stop, weeks ago, me. but this week we Stop. will be reading. The Haftorah for Bechukotai. So, because we're reading the Haftorah for Bechukotai, it actually doesn't connect really at all to Bahar. I mean, no. it's good that we went over it. We know we know a little bit about Bahar, the Shemitah and Har Sinai, but we're actually that is not the connection that we're going to find when we look. What we need to no. look for is the no. connection for Bechukotai. Okay, everybody with me on that? Just wanted to give you all of that was background. Okay. Just picking all my many books here. Just one minute, one more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. The first thing I want to say, given as a, I want to give you a little bit of background. When does I don't know if anybody knows this if you've looked over the parsha, but the the rebuke, the tochacha that is given in Bechukotai, um, yes, is given to Klal Yisrael. I mean, it's given to all of Israel. It's given to everybody, and the language that is used is plural, not pluralistic, but plural. I and mean, it is pluralistic, but it's plural, meaning it's to you in the plural and not in the singular. And it's really interesting. I'm going to show you the Haftarah. When we read the Haftarah, it's actually also will have some rebuke in it, but it's going to have the rebuke in singular. For example, Elecha, Elecha in Hebrew is to you singular. And here in the second pasuk, we'll read it. Hayaselo Adam Elohim, can a man make gods for himself? Lo Elohim, and they are not gods. The whole thing will be, or most of it, will be in the singular. So I want to ask you before we actually go into the Haftarah, I, I just have to put you on mute, Stuart, because I have feedback. You can unmute when you want to speak. If somebody has a suggestion, why would it be? Because remember when the sages were setting up which Haftorah to read, they always tried to connect it to the Parsha. That, that's, that's the given, right? Remember that? We went back to the beginning. We said there was a time when you weren't allowed to read from the Torah. So the sages had this really brilliant idea that we would read from the prophets and kings and those books and um, in order to remind people of the connection. So they always look for some connection either to the day, what day it is, or to the Torah reading. Like on the holidays, it has to do with the day more. It has less to do with the reading, although the reading also has to do with... You know. Anyway, so we keep looking for a connection. So... It was interesting. One person I read said when they were looking for a connection, I always call it the rabbinic subcommittee that was looking for what so said, what should we do? Should, should we bring more rebuke? Like, is that really what we want to put in the Haftarah? It's not enough that we're going to hear rebuke 
in the Torah portion, we're going to add rebuke now in the Haftorah. That doesn't feel very good. So the, it's not that there's any problem finding rebuke in the prophets, especially Jeremiah and also Isaiah, and I'm sure others, because that's mostly what the prophets did was tell us we did things wrong. But in any case, they tried to find something that would be appropriate, but that doesn't just have rebuke, it also has blessing. So that's A, okay? Um, one second, there's one other thing. The other thing that they noticed was that, and, and I'm gonna pose all these questions here, I'm just giving you some background. In the Torah, it starts with brachot. These are the blessings that you will receive if you do as God says. And then it continues to klalot, to curses. Whereas in the Haftorah, it's exactly the opposite. It first starts with the curses and then goes to the blessings. So mm -hmm. I have a few questions. First of all, why would it be that in the Torah portion, it's, it's, uh, the rebuke is for general Israel and the Haftorah, it's actually per person, meaning in the singular form. I would like to think with you together, why, why did they fit with each other? Why does that complement each other with an E? Why, why is that a good thing? Why do you think the sages may have chosen specifically a different, first of all, it's a different structure, blessing curses, and in the Haftorah, cursing blesses, blessings. That's one question. And another question is why in the Torah fits in, you can't change the Torah. The Torah is as is given, but they could have chosen any portion from the Haft, for the Haftorah that they wanted. Why would that would be in singular? What, what would that be good or bad, helpful? Two questions. Well, for the first question, why does the Haftorah end with the Brachot? Therefore, and Wait, Stuart, one second, somebody's speaking, just a minute, yeah. It ends on a happy note or a positive note instead of Beautiful. the downer of the curses. Right. And in other- Wait, wait, one second. And, and remember we had other times, were you gonna say that? That oh, we had other right. Haftorahs that ended on a down note and they went back and repeated yeah. the- ultimate puzzle. Were you going to say that? No, I didn't I want to take it. I, was, I wasn't going to Okay, so that. I want to add that. So remember, we added the penultimate pasuk because it was on an up note. So that's actually a great answer that you would pick one that first curses, then blessings go on. And then for why it's in the plural, then in the singular, by doing that, you're talking about community sins, and then you're talking about individual sins. So it's like you can't be hide behind the community you're also yeah. responsible for your own actions. Beautiful, beautiful, great, great. That's one. I have to say something very quickly. Wait, wait, Stuart, something. yeah. Ruby, one second, Stuart, and then Ruby. Yes, Stuart. If my father uh, ever started by rebuking me, well, thank God my father was, was good to me. And he, I love my father. And if I, if my father started with rebuking me, I don't think I would, I would, I would, I would care what he would say after, after that. That's, that's what I don't like. Uh, he's always rebuking you. You're not supposed to do that to kids. You're not supposed to do that to kids. My father loved me. He, he would never do that to me. He would he was thinking this and that. He would say that. And that's why. That's all. And because in the end, he, oh, but I'll help you. And he, I don't like that. You should, you, should, you, should, you, should, you should crazy a child. Not if they had children. You're starting out. You don't do, you don't do that. I don't like that. So I'm you sorry. think that's I'm a sorry. poor that's model? It. Yeah, that's of course. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. So, okay. so. Yeah, got it. You you were mentioning that uh, first the first the uh, cur usually this curses after the blood curses and then blessings. In the Torah, it's blessings, blessings and then after it's cursing. Stuart, Stuart, Stuart. Uh, I'm sorry, I moved. Somebody else is speaking now. Yes. All right. Go on. Here, here. What could be greater? One second. One second. Stuart. Somebody else is speaking. You got now. my point. You got my point. That's what I'm saying. Yes, I did. Point. I related to it. I appreciate it. I gave you feedback on it. I summarized it and said, I understand that you don't think this is a good model for a parent to speak to a child. Appreciating that. That's right. Thank you. That's right. Okay. Okay. Now Ruby is speaking. Yes, Ruby. I'm saying that the Ten Commandments, what could be in general greater blessings than to receive those? So then we should get blessings first and then give the curses. It shouldn't be the other way around. That makes sense in mm. the Torah. In the Torah. 
So, right. but then when we go the to the Hathora, so keeping yeah. that in mind, so you think you know, they should have picked the the same order? The Torah is the opposite order: first curses, then blessings. All right, the Torah is usually curses then blessings, and I'm saying no, no, that's that not what I said. No, sorry, it's not what I said. Sorry, maybe I should hold up a piece of paper because it's so confusing. I'm going to hold up a piece of paper and I'm going to write it down. As soon as I find a pen. Okay. It's easier, I think, always when you see something visual. Okay. So hold on just a minute. Okay, the, so the first part is the Torah portion, which is blessings, then curses. And the second part is the half Torah, which is curses, then blessings. Uh, so it's the reverse of what I was saying. So tell me, no, I think what you said was correct. You said that the Torah, we start with the Ten Commandments, the Aserat brought that's blessings, and then go to blessings curses. followed by curses. So the but in the Torah, it's the opposite. The opposite. So first of all, I want, yeah, do you have something to add to that, Ruby? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. No, I'm going to wait for Moshe because Moshe wanted to say something and then I'll go back to what I was going to say. The same then, then curses. Okay. Oops, spotlight. Here we go. Moshe, yes. What would you like to say? I think it's because Yemiyahu was during the time of the exile. He was the one who was the prophet of the exile and the people were going right into exile and what he had to tell them is you've already experienced the curses, but right. believe that in the future there will be the blessings that come. That's very nice. That's right, because they're living curses, actually. Yeah, this is he was the one who went into well okay. So that yeah, tallies perfect. Wait, wait, one second. One minute, please. I want to summarize. Uh, um, Ruby and Moshe together came up with a really beautiful explanation where Ruby said, well, no, we started... not, 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 when you start out, you don't, you don't start out, the, you, the, 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 the guys, the kids are Stuart, coming Stuart, out, Stuart, right Stuart, What's wrong? I just want to summarize and then you can give feedback, okay? Okay, so the first part is the, re actually what they're both referring to is that it's reality. The reality was they got the Torah, which were the which Ruby is saying is the blessings, but they need to be warned what will happen if they don't follow it. And Moshe is saying, well, actually, your meow lived in the time of the curses when they were coming true. And then um, there's a promise and hopefulness that it will end with blessings. OK, so they just wanted to summarize what the two of them said. Thank you. Stuart, what do you want to add to that? You know, you don't you don't you don't start you don't. Uh, you... You don't start. You do. You do. You do. You do. You do. You do. You It's not. It's not for for pedagogy. You don't. You don't to attack your children in the beginning. You're supposed to be complementary. So be positive reinforcement. So I heard that. I agree. So even if we, Stuart, we get that. We even if we agree with you, we're checking the text, and if the text is like that, we want to understand the text. So. We can say we don't like the way the text is written, but it still is written that way. So we're trying he, to address he, he, the text. He does that later on anyway. Jeremiah does that anyway. He does that. Okay. All right. Well, this is what we have for the Haftarah. So I was just um, relating to what is in the Haftarah. Okay. So that's... Um, he and then He loves you. He loves you. So what is he, what is he I, I hear he that. Yes. You. Stuart, thank you. Thank you. We heard it. Yes. Appreciating that. Thank you. Does anybody else have something to say in addition to what Helen suggested that uh, why the Torah is in Rabim is in plural and then the Haftar is in Yachid in singular? Why that is beneficial? Why do they match well with each other? So Helen suggested that you can't hide behind communal sins. You have to take responsibility for your own sins as well. Anybody have another thought to add to that? Mm -hmm. Did I, did I Wait a minute, start somebody else speaking. Yeah, Moshe. Wait, 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 let's talk. It's just uh -huh. that after the Galut, there really was no communal. Why do you say, wait, what do you, can you say more about that? Because they lost the, the, the Israel had the, 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 um, 
the king and it had the whole national structure. So that's communal. They had the Beit HaMikdash. You're saying, do you think, so I have a, that's an interesting mm -hmm. point. You're saying that it's only when there's a temple that the Jews can be punished. Us, we can be, the nation of Israel can be punished as a collective. Is that what you're thinking? Mm -hmm. Well, they went into Galut. That meant that there really was no communal structure anymore. There were there was individuals. There were, were communal structures in the Surah Pompadita. You know, that's later. Which, oh, that's uh -huh. you're saying in the moment of his, in the moment of Yirmiyahu prophesizing, he's like, "It's each man for themselves." That fits with history. Well done. Okay. Nice point. And then another point that I read, which I thought is tallies also with what Helen said, is that somebody might think, you know, the Jews as a whole might be punished, but like, I'm not going to be punished. I'm not going to have that. I might not be a part of it. But then Jeremiah comes and says exactly what Helen said, that you are still responsible for your own, for your own actions, for your own believing God. Okay, all of that is background. Ted and Phyllis, I don't know, is it just going up to Buffalo that makes you quiet? Uh, all right, let's get into the meat and let's read. Stuart, did yes. you want to add before we just go? Listening, yes, just listening yeah, to everyone. I, I would say it was, it was too sudden. It's too sudden. He, 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 got, he, he got the exit, he's a little clean eye, everything's nice, and all of a sudden he, he's starting to attack you again. I don't like yeah. that. I'm sorry. Yeah, we get that. We, we, I think you've come through loud and clear that message that you don't like it. <laughs> And thank you for reminding us of what good pedagogy is. Like, don't follow this one necessarily. Okay. Okay. It actually starts out with this pasuk. Oh, Lord, my strength and my stronghold, my refuge in a day of trouble. To you, nations shall mm -hmm. come from the ends of the earth and say, our fathers inherited other delusions, things that are futile and worthless. So remember, we said it starts with the curses. So this is setting the stage for it. Can a man make gods for himself? No gods are they, Hema Lo Elohim, they're not our God. Mm -hmm. Assuredly, I will teach them once and for all. I will teach them my power and my might. That's God speaking. They shall learn that my name is Lord. Continuing. I just want to get into there. Are, it's not such a long Haftarah. The guilt of Judah is inscribed with a stylus of iron, beautiful English actually, engraved with an adamant points on the tablet of their hearts. And on the horns of their altars, I think it means their altars where they, where they uh, bring offerings to other gods. I think it's always hard for me to connect with these sins of idol worship because I have no Yetzirah. I have nothing pulling me to worship idols. So just pointing that out. While their children remember their altars and sacred posts. So I don't know the word verdant, but I know what the word is in Hebrew. Anan is like refreshing. Um, Cleansing. I don't know. How would you explain verdant? I don't know what the word or verdant. I don't know how to pronounce it. Greenery and rich greenery. Oh, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Ranan. So I guess that's what it means in Hebrew, too. Yeah, where it's very, very leafy and green. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Verdant. That's how you pronounce it. Mm -hmm. Lofty yeah. hills. Because of the sins of your shrines, remember your shrines that what you did that was not for God throughout your borders, I will make your rampart a heap in the field and all your treasures a spoil. And again, it's all in the, for those who read Hebrew, everything is in the singular. I will, they, you will forfeit by your own act the inheritance since I've given you. I will make you a slave to your enemies in the land you have never known. You have kindled the flame of my wrath, which shall burn for all time. Mm. Oh, Hashem. Here's the word. So you know this from the song. I think that's in here. Let me just check. Is that in here? I don't remember if that particular one. I think it's in here, but we'll get to it. So first, it's exactly the opposite. Instead of Baruch HaGever, blessed is the man. Baruch HaGever. Cursed is the man, Ashev Tachpadam, who trusts in people. Mm. Who like strong arm, you know, that emoji of strong arm, that that's what he thinks it's all about him. Mm. 
and his thoughts are turned away from God and not trusting God. Well, one thing that was interesting, I just want to point out, it's not so much examples of punishment, but rather what is the thinking that could bring you to receive punishment? It's a little more thoughtful in that sense. What is the step before the person who trusts in man? You know, it was interesting. Um, I was just in Israel, as we discussed. And on Shabbat, we were together. My mother was there as well. We had a really, which is a big bracha to have four generations there. We went away for Shabbat. And um, my mother was talking about how during COVID, she was alone. She lives alone. My, my father passed away. And she said Shabbat became terrible for her. She always looks forward to Shabbat, to going to shul, to going away, to having meals. And she said every Shabbat now felt like a curse to her, which was hard and harsh to hear and understandable as well. She said for what, you know, people in her building were lovely. They wouldn't, you know, first they did it with masks and they invited her for Habdalah and then a little bit they had Kiddush. She, she bakes a lot. So she would give everybody a bag of Mizonot before Shabbat. And my daughter said that for her, actually Shabbat was exactly the opposite because it, you know, the kids were in pajamas basically all week on, on Zoom and she's a teacher. She also was. She said that was the day they got out of pajamas. They dressed in Shabbat clothing and they actually really enjoyed the time because each kid wasn't on their own Zoom with school. She also had a baby, you know, it became actually a precious time. But something that she learned um, very, very strongly was that nothing is sure. Nothing, you can't, you can't trust that anything will happen. She actually learned to trust in God and to leave things up to God more than she ever had. She said, everything changed. She just, she realized, she always says now, if it'll be, if it will happen, not in a despondent way, but in a, I understand that we don't have control like we thought we did. So I think that is this pasuk. I can tell her, I'll send her a message. This pasuk is in your, in the haftarah. The pasuk that says, one minute. No, here it is. That cursed is the man who trusts in human beings and relies on the muscles of his or her own arm. Mm -hmm. Then, it's the famous pasuk, like a weed in the barren wilderness. There's a place in Israel called Arava. And not see, lo will not see when good comes. Lived in a parched desert, a salt land that cannot be settled. So up till here, up till here, um, this is all about how you get to that point. I would like to hear thoughts from people in this group. How do we get to that point that we would end up having the klalot, the curses? Do you agree with that this is the way? Do you agree with your Yahoo? What things have you noticed that could bring us to be deserving on our own or collectively? I guess it could be either one, although Moshe you know, points out that it's a little bit different since we left the, since we don't have the temple, it doesn't feel like the seat of authority is in one place. So I'd love to hear from people. If the idea being in this Torah is to jumpstart our thinking to what happened before. What brings us to a place where we may be deserving of punishment by God? I would love to hear people's thoughts on that. Hmm. Vivian, did you unmute? No, Henry, you have to unmute Henry. And welcome Henry to our class and welcome Carol who's back from Florida. And welcome- Lashon Hara. Lashon Hara, yeah, yeah, beautiful, yes. It's not respecting, which actually is very appropriate for this time of year with Spirata Omer, when we say that the reason that the students of Rabbi Akiva were deserving of whatever fate they met, whether it was a plague or killed by soldiers, was because of um, not respecting the other, which I imagine was Lashon Hara in many cases. Thank you. Lashon Hara could lead. To yes. Any other thoughts? Stuart, you have a thought? Yes, I have a, I have a, I have a thought. In every half hour, I know it. In every half hour, First comes the abuse, then I'll, uh, everything will be all right. First, it's, and Not, every house over. Yeah. Every house over. Stories also. But I'll save you. Sometimes we have I, stories, I know, yeah. 
So what about it? I don't like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Got it. <laughs> Moving on. Give me the, yeah. So I'm we have reinforcement. I'm yeah. the reinforcement. I'm the reinforcement. I'm the Right. And the truth is, why is it that the Jews didn't listen? It's not so clear that they didn't listen to the prophets. Who knows why? It's very hard to know. I think somebody in this class came up with an idea of why they didn't listen to the prophets. They didn't believe the prophets or they didn't want to or whatever the reason was. Any other thoughts about what brings us to a place? Yes, Robert. Well, it isn't that there are uh, the, the quote, the, the Jews or a uh, whole you know, how didn't do things. Each individual contributes their own uh, lack of, uh, contributes their own failures. And then those all those add up to an overwhelming amount of um, behavior, which calls for retrib retribution. So yeah, are you saying that when we have to take, so this is what I'm hearing, tell me if I'm hearing correctly, that it's not just about us being responsible, it's that our actions actually influence more and then it becomes a greater deed. I mean, I, I, I don't know if that's what you said, but that makes a lot of sense to me because if you're in an, um, an environment of enmity, em, enmity or enmity? Em, enmity. Enmity, M N. Okay, the, and people talking poorly about each other or disrespectful that can influence us. Somebody was mm -hmm. just telling me she loves that in America people are polite even if they don't really mean it. But she said it still adds to a feeling of niceness. Mm -hmm. How are you? How was your day? And I thought that was interesting. Ruby, did you want to add? Mm -hmm. I, think yeah, it, I think it's sort of human, human nature that when we're told to do something, our gut reaction is to question it, to test it. Uh, and to not, not be not, not quite believe it. So maybe in getting those 10 commandments, even though they're came from Hashem, we're, we're questioning, we're testing, whatever. And so we're not starting, starting off with acceptance. And nice. Maybe mm -hmm. Even though we said not seven Ishma, but we're not doing that really. Yeah. Nice. That's, that's a very, that's very interesting. Um, very, very interesting. Um, Sorry, my brain is working a little bit on jet lag, so I'm groping for a word that I can't think of, but it's a commentary. It's like a nice commentary on the reality of people, which by the way, Ruby, doesn't feel negative. It just feels more like I'm noticing. It can come across as negative and, and maybe yes. even, maybe the end conclusion can be negative. Yes. You know, yes. Before nice. you come to the positive. Nice. Okay, thank you. Uh, Robert, I, before I go to the Vivian and Ted, Robert, I'm sorry, I feel like I cut you off, so please say it. Uh, mm -hmm. As Henry mm -hmm. said before, he goes, he's right, Lashon Hara, if uh, yeah. people are doing things and no one stands up and says, hey, stop it, that's wrong, then that person becomes part of the bad yes. contribution. Love it's, that, it's that's amazing. Yep. It's, it's an individual's responsibility mm -hmm. to stand up and say no. Uh, to, right, to so it's your, it's your responsibility not to do it, but it's also your responsibility to be to be the person who stands up, the upstander, it's called, not bystander, but upstander. Beautiful, beautiful, Robert, a beautiful thought. Vivian. You know, I was thinking that uh, you have to remember you can't react the same way all the time. You, of course, things change and, and uh, you need to be resilient. You need to respond in a way that will be appropriate for that time or for that, for that situation and not just um, the... Do not like, to be like so rigid, yeah. not to be Vivian, not to be so rigid, not to be rigid, yeah. So you're right, and that can precipitate the yes, I hear what you're saying. The thoughts that are being rigid. Uh, 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 wait, 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 Stuart, Stuart, wait, sorry, I have, I have Stuart, but somebody, Stuart, somebody is waiting. I have, I have Stuart, 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 you have Stuart. Wait, yeah. one second, on. one second. Ted I'll, was- I'll do it later you. on, I'll, I'll do it later on, let talk. I'm, mm -hmm. I'll do it later on, okay. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. I will call on you when it's your turn. Thank you very much. Yes, Vivian, so what you're saying is that um, that can lead to people, and we know people who are very rigid, and it can lead to, what does it lead to in your mind? Like what, what mm -hmm. words would you use that it leads to, Vivian? Yeah. Rigidity. Um, the, 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 uh rigidity like like a like a, a an automatic reaction that that uh, without thought without 
um, ideas of how it would affect others and how how it would affect our children and future generations and and uh, w w what the result will be from from the way we react and not just uh, uh, an automatic reaction every time. Right. And I want to add to that, I'm seeing it playing out even in halakha, where there can be a rigidity to halakha, which doesn't allow for other people to have different halakhic opinions or to live their lives differently. That's a rigidity that can absolutely create, um, you know, enmity and, um, and disrespect between people, 100%. Thank you. Yeah. Ted, waiting so patiently. Uh -oh. <laughs> A major theme in all of the prophets is social justice. Yeah. The, the, the requirement just, just a line from, from Isaiah, learn to do well. And then he gives examples, seek justice, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. When we don't care for the weakest among us, then a society is in trouble. Mm -hmm. and brings down the wrath. Right, 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 right. So we have a few ideas starting with Lashon Hara. I, I mean, it's interesting. I just want everybody to notice that although Ruby has brought in the Ten Commandments, the Aserat Hadibrot, which are the Ten Utterances according to Rabbi Sachs and the Ten something else, can't remember, somebody else suggested a different word. It's not really Ten Commandments. That's not what the word is in Hebrew. But one second, Stuart, I have not forgotten, I promise. I will get back to you. But all of what you have brought up, I think, are ben adam lachabero, are between the way we act one person to another. Is that true, or am I missing something? I, you know, I, I actually believe that as well. I, I, it's very, you know, a good person who doesn't keep Shabbat to me is a good person and is not in my mind, you know, worthy of punishment, rage of God. Like I, I, I'm not saying I follow Shabbat. I keep Shabbat. I believe in it. I believe in the mitzvot. I believe in following everything that God said to the best of my ability. But I find it very hard to be that rigid, rigid person who judges people who don't keep it the way I do, or who just don't really care about halakha. They don't maybe even believe in God, but they lead a uh, ethical, moral, caring life that feels, but it's just interesting to me. I think in other settings with different people, I might hear, well, people don't keep Shabbat, people don't keep the Chagim, people don't keep the mitzvot. Those are the ones who bring down the wrath of God. I just, I'm imagining that that would be true. And um, I always find that a little bit hard that that would be, I think that being good to each other. My, um, my first husband's uncle, Eliezer Yaffe, was a very special person who created the School of Social Work at Hebrew U and created many things like Zahavi, which is the Free Loan Association in Israel, which is huge. It's amazing. Not Zahavi, sorry. Um, sorry, sorry. Um, that's the Schuyot. That's for people who have many children to get a discount. Um, that's Zahavi. But the, um, I forgot what it's called, the Hebrew, the Hebrew Free Loan Association. That is what it's called. It's amazing because people repay the loans and then the money gets, you know, it started from this little teeny room with a computer. And it's now a whole building. It's really very special. And he used to say that our lives are on loan to us. It's a sixth yard site coming up. Our, li our lives are on loan. And we should, when, we, when it gets recalled back from the loan from God, we should be paying it back with interest. And interest is doing good in this world. And I just love that way of thinking. And I feel like that goes along with what everybody said here. So I wanted to thank you for that. Okay, Stuart, something quick, because I'm going to go back to the Haftarah. Supposing when you went to shul, the rabbi and you and all the rabbis were nasty to people. We're always critical of people. How 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 long would that shul last? Yeah, right. Yeah, I I like to help the That's why I first saw you. I was happy because I saw you. The girls at the bat mitzvah, you were teaching them. You you can if you leave. If you if you always rebuild people, you wouldn't get to prove. Suppose Rabbi White would rebuild people. How long would it be Rabbi White? Not never. He was always good to people. Good point. That's why. That's why. Well, I'm why. loving the. Yeah. Thank you, sir. That's, that's beautiful. Why. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very nice way to bring it home. I appreciate that. Okay, let's um let's go back to the rest of the haftarah. 
So remember what we said? So here it is. Baruch HaGever, Asher Yivtach B'Hashem. Hold on one second. Okay, uh, go back to sharing screen. So we know this pasuk well because it's in benching. Baruch HaGever, blessed is the person, who actually puts his or her faith in God, whose trust is in the Lord alone. And then remember, we moved from the curses to the blessings. Bahaya, how will that person be? Not like a thorny, a thorn bush in a, you know, an empty wasteland, but ke'etz shatul al like a tree planted by waters, sending forth its root, roots by a stream. It does not sense the coming of heat. Its leaves are ever fresh. It has no care in a year of drought, and it does not cease to yield fruit. So this is the blessing. Akov halev mikol. The Anushumi, the Enum. Okay, so it's that's a typical, <laughs> almost unfathomable pasuk. I but wait, I just want to say that something about this. We're almost at the end. So this is an interesting pasuk because it speaks to the motivation behind what people do. I, the Lord, probe the heart, search the mind to repay every person according to their ways with the proper fruit of their deeds. And what that speaks about is what was actually, one second. Yeah, this speaks about, are you, are you seemingly following Hashem's edict because it's convenient for you or are you choosing to do it? So that's another hidden message here. Why did, why did God need to probe the heart? Maybe God could just look at, our ways. So it works to our benefit. It can also work to our detriment if we're doing it just to be showy or show offy or you know what? Although, you know what? I think we mentioned it once that the one mitzvah that does good, even if you don't mean it, is staka, giving money, giving charity, because it still does good. <laughs> still does good, even if you do it for perhaps not the right reasons. Like a partridge hatching what she did not lay, so is one who amasses wealth by unjust means. And know that your wealth will not stay by you because God will give you your just rewards in the end. Um, although it's hard to know because of course, many of us know people who are not good people and have a lot of wealth. So that's always a hard question. And I want to leave us with this question. Mikveh Yisrael Hashem. So a mikveh, mikveh is from the word that the mayim yikavu, that the waters come together. But it's the same word that it's like tikvah. Hope, like Hatikva, that we sing, that's the Israeli anthem. O hope of Israel, Lord, all who forsake you shall be put to shame. Those in the land who turn from you shall be doomed, for they have forsaken the Lord. And then, so I want to end with, but I want to say this first, and then end with the question about hope. Rifa'eni Hashem ve'erafe. This could be Jeremiah asking God to heal him of him being so down and despondent. Save me and I will be saved. This is in our davening. For those who daven, that's in our Amida prayer. It's in the plural. So this is the opposite. It's taking the singular and, and, and moving it to the plural because of course our Amida prayer is all the plural except for places where we can add for people who are sick or to hear our voices. There's a special prayer that can be that, that can be um, in the singular. So I just want you to know that when the, the sages were putting together our davening, I see you, Phyllis, when the sages were putting together our davening, they took psukim and they took wording from our psukim. Do you want me to keep up the wording or should I stop the sharing, Phyllis? Um, you can stop the sharing. Okay, yeah, go. I, I was gonna just say, um, even with the curses, the fact that it's related to nature and um, things that grow just seems so appropriate for us to be talking about now in the spring um, when we've been doing a lot of planting. And it just is, I think it's a really cool connection between people and the earth and nature. So. Very nice, beautiful. And I wanna say even in the desert or in the thorny, thorny plants, even when they seem like they're not alive, often underneath 
they are. And we read, I think we read it together, that a shoot, a green shoot can come out of the dry stump. Was that together with you that we read it? I feel like we did. That was a few weeks ago, maybe. Um, so the last thank you for that. That's that's a very nice, upbeat and hopeful thought. I really like that. Uh, what what can we say? Like, what 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 is your hope? Like, what happens? What brings you hope? If people could share, you don't have to share, but if somebody could share, or any 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 of you want to share, what what brings you hope when things feel down? What brings you hope? What is our hope? What is your hope? Uh, my hope is when somebody calls me up and I'm, I'm alone with somebody calls me. Nice connection. Me beautiful, beautiful connection right. between people. Yeah, right. Yep. Got it. Thank you, Stuart. When somebody cares and calls up, Phyllis. Um, there are lots of things that give me hope, but one of the things that really made me smile yesterday was when I went out on the deck and there's a morning dove that built a nest and she was feeding the fledgling and it was just so cool. I'm out here because I dive it out on the, on the deck and I just was smiling the whole time. Beautiful. Seeing growth and renewal. Beautiful. Ted, you have something to add? No, that was good. <laughs> that was good one. Okay, you're going with her this time. Who else has something to share? What brings you hope? Somebody? Nobody? You can keep it to yourself. That's also good. <laughs> Robert? I could show you a few feet away. There's a, I took the uh, horseradish root from Pesach, you know, I ground it down, and there's a large piece left, and I put it in water. And it's, it's putting out green shoots. I'm going to go plant it in the garden today. You know, that's beautiful. Be very careful. It takes over the garden. Do not put it in your garden. It literally will take over your whole garden. So be careful. Look okay. it up. But I want to, so I suggest actually you take it out. Somebody just told me that. And how much horseradish can you actually eat, right? So you could keep it in a pot and grow it, but I don't recommend you put it in the garden. But um, that's just a tip. Not, I'm not a gardener, but somebody just told me this. But I want to tell you something. My mother... A month before Pesach or three weeks, whatever, she takes off the end, the knob of the horseradish, who puts it in water and keeps adding water. And then on the Seder plate, it looks very beautiful. So next year, do it before Pesach and then the on your, because we don't usually necessarily eat what's on the Seder plate necessarily. So it'll look very, very pretty on your Seder plate. That's a tip for everybody. You can just cut off the knobs of the horseradish root and grow shoots if you do it two or three weeks before. Mine, I have a picture of it. It grew beautiful, beautiful green leaves. And I have other friends who have done it. And somebody told me her mother or her husband said, I think his mother, you know, that's many, like a hundred years ago, used to do the same thing. So other people know of this. All right. So you know what? It all comes back to like uh, nature and renewal and growth. And um, thank you everybody for joining. It was a very nice class. I really appreciated the thoughtfulness. Started from Bahar, moved to Bahukotai and Naftar. Did you want to add something, Helen? No, just thank you. Oh, pleasure. And next week, so next week, we have a special Haftorah next Shabbat because Rosh Chodesh is Sunday. And when Rosh Chodesh is Sunday, we don't read the regular Haftorah. So stay tuned. All right, my okay. friends. Good day. Thank Be well. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.